There we are. Yes, tis little old me. Good morning, Chet. It's Saturday the 12th of April 2014. This morning's United Kingdom talk. Uh, I see people are already gathered. Daniel's with us already. Good morning, Daniel. Uh, oh, Croydon? Croydon, I think, Daniel. Terry H says it's clow, cold, cloudy and cold in Leeds today. Well, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a northern effect. If you're cold... You know, all these people up north, I have to tell you, boys and girls, wherever you are in the world, all people in the north of England, they walk around their houses naked, complaining they're cold all the time because they can't afford to turn the heating on. Or, or in Terry's case, he's too tight to turn the heating on. Isn't that right, Terry? Eh? If you put some clothes on now, and I think it's some sort of religious thing they do. You know, where all the time they're wandering the house, around the house, completely and totally naked. Cooking, hoovering... You know, bit of dusting. Although I've heard, I've heard that Terry in Leeds is our. How can we say this? He wouldn't do. He wouldn't do wrong to employ a cleaner or something like that. I have heard this. Yeah, I haven't been there myself. Never invited. You know. I mean, if I was invited, I mean, I would come, Terry, as long as you don't mind me putting ovals from, ovals on because I don't want to dirty my clothes. Do you know what I mean? But I don't, I don't know what it is about the people up north. They're always complaining it's cold because they won't put any clo- uh, cold because they won't put any clothes on. What, what is all that about, please? Do let me know. I, I, I don't understand it, Terry. But uh, good morning, sir. And uh, talking of coldness, Matt is with us this morning as well. He's in Canada. Good morning, Matt in Winnipeg. I like that. I like that name, Winnipeg. Winnipeg in Canada. That's where it gets cold. And they in Canada, they wear clothes. And they're still cold. You know, they got a vest on, they got a t shirt on, they got a jumper on, they got some uh, fur thing on, seal skins, polar bear fur, everything, hats and everything, and they're still cold. I mean, why on earth do you want to live there? I don't understand. Do you have central heat in there? Have you got one of those real log fires? Or do you know what? I've been considering having one of those wood-burning stove things put into my house. The only thing is, there's no chimney here. We don't, I don't have a chimney. So what they'd have to do is put a flue either up the, up the house, sort of, sort of against the wall but inside, up through the bedroom, and then up into the loft, and then up through the roof, OK? Or they could have the flue coming outside the house, because I'm end of terrace, like I'm at the end house. They could have it coming out of the wall and then up around the outside. Now, when I, f- I have already inquired about this, and I was down the shop a couple of weeks ago, funnily enough, but funny, I've, I've, I've come on to this now. Um, and the flue would go outside the house and then up the side of the house. But I've seen a couple of pictures and I think they look bloody ugly. You know, you can either have a silver one I say silver. What, what, what is it? Um, stainless steel, is it? I don't know what it is, but it's like a silver-coloured one that comes out. And, uh, but quite frankly, I mean, it would look like I've opened an Indian restaurant or something like that here. You know? <laughs> it, look, it, look like, it looked like one of those things they'd have outside a fish and chip restaurant where the, where the thing comes out of the, out of the shop and up. up the, oh, just awful. Or they do do a black one, which looks a bit better, but I'm still not convinced I like the look of it. Having one of these things coming outside your house. And then inside the house, you have this, like, metal... Um, I think it's made of cast iron, this metal thing, um, made of... As I say, cast iron, and you open the door and you put in bits of wood and you close the door and it's all nice and warm. I've already been down the shop and they had a couple of these things on. My God, they did not chuck out a lot of heat. They really do, and it looked. I thought that would look nice in some ways, but I'm not sure about a flue going up the side of it. You know, maybe as I continue to look at the pictures, I might think, oh, it doesn't look too bad after all, but. I mean, none of the houses round here have got one of those things coming outside. Plus, I'd have to have permission. Because when I bought this, I had to have the same for the window, because it just had the windows done as well. I, th- I think if it comes out the side of the house, it's going to have to go up and across a little bit and then up because of the two new windows, you know, which I had done last year, which I was very pleased with those. Mm, so a lot to think about there but I also have to have permission because when I bought this house I had to sign this covenant thing that said if you wanted to change the exterior of the house at all you have to ask permission you know 
And of course, every time you ask permission, you have to send them like 120 quid you know, for someone to quickly, oh, yep, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Quick stamp and off it goes again. Thank you for the 120 quid sort of thing, you know. Why is it 120 quid to look at a bloody letter? Why is that? Thieving bastards, all of them. Never mind. So that's what I'm thinking of uh, having done, Matt. I'll let you know how we get on with that one. Good morning to Mark. I love a wood-burning stove, but so expensive to run. Oh, are they expensive to run? What, more expensive than putting the gas on? Are they, Mark? I thought, you know, I thought, Mark, you know, I might get one of those wood-burning stoves and then invite you around to come and sit by it with me on my settee, on my new corner piece of sea. I think you might like it. Would you like that, Mark? I thought you might. Yeah, that's tempted you, isn't it, eh? Oh, I might get it just, just for the sake of getting you around here. <laughs> Terry H says, you're so cheeky. I've got the heating on and I'm cleaned here. Well, you might be clean, but I very much... Have you got the heating on? What, today? Today? It's like 14 degrees out. Oh, of course you're in the north. I forgot. Of course I forgot. In the north, that's the other thing. Oh, everyone, people outside the UK, I must tell you, if you go to the north, it's always much, much colder, OK? I must warn you that. The sun doesn't come out in... In, in the winter, the, you, the sun doesn't come out in the north at all, OK? It's permanent darkness. You know that place, is it in Iceland or Norway, where they have, like, you know, no daylight for a period of time, when it's like that for the whole of the winter in Leeds? I don't have any daylight at all. You're best to come down south and see how wonderful things like Big Ben and the River Thames. Don't be tempted to swim in the River Thames, dear. You know. <laughs> oh, dear. Mark says, it's the logs that do it. I'm up for it, though. Cup of tea. Tea? You're coming round for a cup of tea? Oh, don't bother then. Um... <laughs> Daniel Camberley, thank you, Daniel. Oh, for God's sake, I thought you was one of those people that lives in Croydon. I was going to have to, you know, block you immediately. Brandon, one of our regular people, lives in uh, uh, in uh, in Croydon as well. You know, I, I have to pretend that you know I don't mind talking to him, but I'm, I'm trying to entice him to to move out of Croydon into a nice area, perhaps like Camberley, Daniel. I think. I don't know if he'd fit in in Cambly. You know, you've got to up the ante a bit, haven't you? Because he's quite posh in Cambly. I do know the area. Uh, he says, think of the trees you can cut down from the woods behind your house and the money you will save on gas. Well, that's... I don't know if I'd go around about doing tree cutting or anything like that. Maybe, Mark, if you come around, you can cut the trees down for me. They're about three times the size of the house. Can you do that? But then you have to dry them out or something, don't you? Don't you have to leave them for two years to dry out? Well, I, I really didn't know that it was um, expensive to run a wood-burning stove. I just assumed it would be cheaper than putting the gas on. Eh? Perhaps you can give me some idea. Have you had a wood-burning stove, Mark? And when you say it cost a lot to run, pres run, presumably you mean the wood. Did you have to buy the wood? Is that very expensive? And, and if you buy, like, a bag of wood, say... Let me think what size. You know those um, black, the big black bags? You know the black bags? If, if that was full of wood, how much would that cost? And how long would it last? Would it last a month, a bag of wood like that? I would assume a month or something. I've no idea, really. Do let us know, Mark. We're going to have to go fire shopping, I think. Uh, Matt says, my previous residence had... Oh, you sound very royal now, Matt. Residence. That's a sort of... That's the sort of language that the Queen would speak in, that, that, that you know, the, uh, uh, Kate Middleton would... Oh, we've got a little story about her in a minute, that uh, Prince Charles would speak in. My last residence... He says, my previous residence had a wood-burning stove, and I found, overall, it did cost more, as the price of wood has increased about 40% over the last 10 years in Canada. Oh. Well, I didn't realise that. My current flat has central heating, and even with these insane temperatures, we pay about $50 a month on electricity. Oh, well, that's not too bad, is it? $50 a month doesn't sound too bad at all, actually, if that's all it's costing you to... Is that, is that all your electricity, or just the heating? Huh? I do like to know these uh, little bits of information. Uh, Mark says, yes, it is the wood that... Um, uh, uh, it is the wood that costs the money. Um, 
He says, uh, it's a bit butch for me, you know, chopping trees. Oh, I think you could put your hand to it, Mark. I tell you what, what we'll do is find a suitable tree to cut down. I will come along and set up my karaoke system next to the tree and you can sing while you chop. Sing and chop. Could be the name of a whole new video show, couldn't it? Sing and chop with Mark E and Chris Reardon. I like the sound of that. It was costing about 30 quid a week to run. Oh, that's a lot. So it's 100 and big black bag would be about 60 quid. Last about two weeks, really, unless it's winter. What it go? I would get for a big black bag of um, wood in 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 the winter in sort of less than two weeks. Oh, that is expensive. I didn't realise that. I didn't realise that at all. Trouble is, you know, if you do chop down your own wood, you couldn't just go out there and chop a tree down. Someone would notice, wouldn't they? Someone would ring the council. I rang the council about someone this week, actually. Oh, yes, dear. Yes. Well, this blo I, I spotted a piece of concrete suddenly appear outside this bloke's house. I won't tell you where it is. Big piece of... Not small. Large piece of concrete. Right, suddenly appeared outside this bloke's house. Now, I know he does DIY all the time. Annoyingly, sometimes in the morning at like eight o'clock, you hear this bloody saw going all the time. I mean, the cat does her head in. It does her head in. All right? So I picked up the phone. I said, excuse me, um, I think someone's dumped a piece of concrete outside. So they went, I don't know. I mean, it's gone now. Took him two days to move it. Don't know if he got in trouble or not. That's outrageous, isn't it? Dumping a bit of concrete on someone's grass like that. Awful. Anyway, so Mark says, yeah, he definitely goes through loads of wood. Or oh, maybe I won't do that then. See, I didn't like the chimney, Mark. This, this thing, this flue going up the side of your house. Not nice at all, please. No. Uh, Daniel says, do you have a modern, high-efficient high boiler? No, I don't. I've got um, solar... I've got solar panel i've got two types of solar panels the ones that make electricity they're called solar pv panels and the ones that make hot water okay not quite sure what thermal that that's it thermal so much solar panel so the idea is the water in the summer okay the water goes through the thermal one and then gets stored back in the tank now i gather if you want one of those new condensing boilers you it has to be done a special way to incorporate the hot water coming from the solar panel and it's all a bit awkward oh hang on a minute this is my cousin ringing is that is that cousin simon it is my how you doing good morning simon are you aware that you are now on my live on my chat show are you serious yes i'm absolutely serious we're doing it at the moment and you've suddenly how, appeared how do i on. sign off immediately oh no need to do that simon we can have a bit of a chat with you <laughs> Are you still over here on your holiday with your family? No, I finished. Oh, so I'm you're back, back in um, Abu Dhabi? I'm back in sunny Abu Dhabi, yeah. Is it hot there now? Yeah, no, it's not that hot, mate. It's only about uh, 35 degrees. Is it better than... Oh, it was better better than it was here then, weren't it? All right, shall I give you a call after I've finished? Uh, yeah, yeah, mate, I've got um, inspection of the kids over soon. What is the time so. there? The time is 3.14. 3.14, 4.14, 14, 5.14. So sometimes... I'm not it's... seriously on your chat show, Yeah, I? you are. Yeah, you are. You are. We do it 12 till 1 every Saturday, the live one. Would you all like right, to say well, hello great to Great to see you, mate. we got people from Canada and all over listening this morning. Have you told them all about the Concord and everything? Of course. That was last week, mate. Concord? That was last week. Do that was try. last week, of course. Do try and keep up with us. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Bye, Simon. All right. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Take it easy, mate. Oh, that... <laughs> Isn't it fabulous? You get members of the family ringing and everything. <laughs> <coughs> oh, dear. Excuse me. Yep. So, Daniel, um, so it has to be done a special way. And actually, I rarely have the hot water on. And I'll tell you why. I belong to the Hilton hotel swimming pool up the road. Okay, so this is like a, just a swim. That's what it is, a swimming pool. So, that's where I go daily. And while I'm up there, I have a shower. Okay? 
Um, the only other time I've and I've got a dishwasher downstairs, right, which is a cold water in. Okay, the washing machine downstairs is a cold water in so the only time i really use hot water is if um i clean the house right in which case it goes on or if i brush my teeth okay and i found you know i found what i was doing is flicking the button on for half an hour to give me a bit of warmer water to brush my teeth because if i use cold water to brush my teeth it really hurts <laughs> really really hurts right so i I, I, I would warm that. Anyway, I stopped doing that. And now I go and turn the kettle on with a cup of water for about 15 seconds and the water's warm enough for me to brush my teeth. See? Right? How good is that? So I rarely have the boiler on. So for the £3,000 it would cost me to... Um, to change the boiler because mine's about 15 years old and i'll tell you I, do you know much about boilers uh daniel i'll tell you what it is it's a potterton prima c that's what i've got i think it's about 15 years old i also really have the heating it's got to be really cold for me to turn the heating on when i say really cold i mean eight degrees okay if it's eight degrees i might turn the heating on on the other hand if i've just been swimming and i walk back i'm warm you're only cold if you sit at home doing nothing. That's when you're really cold. If you're an active person, like myself, you walk up to the swimming pool 20 minutes at speed, you do your 60 lengths or whatever, you walk back, you come back, and then you have dinner. You're warm. So rarely do I have that heating on as well. It's, if I come in from work, you know, it might be, ooh, a bit cold as I, I put an electric blanket on for half an hour, get in the bed. Go straight to bed. So I rarely have the heating on. So I honestly don't think it would be worth my while changing to one of those highly efficient boilers to save, you know, not much a year. So I don't know um, what you think about those comments. I would be interested to hear what you think about that, Daniel. All right. He says, I'm a gas safe engineer. Oh, do you do the... um uh, the Because uh, I've got these... um. Things like this, gas safety record forms and all that business. Is that what you do? Because I'm, I don't know if I told you, uh, uh, Daniel, I'm a landlord as well. So I, I get, a, although only one, let me think now, only two of the properties have got um, uh, gas central heating in there. So a two bedroom house down here and a one bedroom one, but that's way up north. So I have all those done and all those little safety bits and pieces. Um, Terry H says, oh, please tell us about your hospital appointment. Oh, we're coming to that, dear. We're coming to that in a minute, Terry. Stop rushing me. Uh, Mark says, I find brushing my teeth with warm water is better anyway, cleaner. Yeah, oh, it's much better. If I do, if I do that, you know when you do that bit at the end, when you, when you uh, rinse your mouth out, you go... <laughs> into, <laughs> into the uh, sink... That's the worst. If it's cold water, oh, that don't half hurt my teeth. In fact, um, I have on occasion, very, very rarely, very rarely, if I've come in, oh, I'm so tired, I've got to go to bed, you know, from work, which it will probably be a bit like that tonight because I'm working Coventry tonight and I don't get back here till very late. I mean, I finish at 3 a.m. in Coventry. I won't be in bed tonight till about 5, 5.15 tomorrow morning. Right? So sometimes I come in and I'm, I've, oh, can I wait? You know, and it is only 20 seconds in the kettle. Switch on, 20 seconds, switch off. That's warm enough to brush your teeth. I think, oh, and I've just go to bed, which is very, very bad. Very, very rarely do I not brush. And the floss. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do the floss as well. Very important. Mark. No, I'm not old enough to take my teeth out and put them under the tap. How dare you? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Matt says in Canada I've found they are all doing away with natural gas and as a result people are saving big time what and switching to electricity see in this country um, I don't know about Canada but in the UK it is cheaper so they say to heat by gas than electricity I mean it really is um, Daniel says £3,000 you're being ripped off Chris what for a new new boiler well, I'm guessing... I, I did look around for that. 
I did actually look around, and three thousand pound for one of those boilers um, seemed to be about what the average was. But as I say, because I've already got it, the, the boiler would be filling up sometimes with very hot water, right? Because of that solar panel. So because I've got that, it makes it difficult for them to put a condensing boiler. Uh, uh, is it a condensing boiler in? A condensing boiler in because that water is already hot, certainly during the summer when it comes in. In effect, probably better to have like two completely different systems, but then you'd have bloody four taps and things like that, wouldn't you? So that's the news there. Uh, Mark says, I've got eroded wisdom teeth, so I need to use warm water as my mouth is too sensitive. Your mind is like that as well, Mark. I'm gonna have to come to another karaoke night sometime so you can show me the ropes. Mark, I, d I can't remember where you live. I am now doing a new karaoke night on Sundays. I don't know if you've seen my little updates on the Facebook, uh, but the cherry tree, okay, that's in Grove Road, East Dulwich, very close to the train station. You come out the train station, you turn left, it's there on the left. Literally no more than a minute and a half's walk. That is Sundays, and we start at six o'clock. That's an early start, that one, okay? Don't know if you can come down to that one. Where do you live, Mark? Can't remember where you live. Do let us know, okay? So the cherry tree... East Dulwich, SE 22 or 23 it is. Very close to East Dulwich Station. Sunday nights from 6 o'clock. I'll be there tomorrow. Are you coming to sing? Sing, sing, sing. If I have to sing another song, it wouldn't bother me. Yeah. Chertsey. Oh, do you, did you used to work for Gary? Oh, we'll come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. You must come tomorrow and sing us a song. All right. Uh, who else we got to say hi to? Ah, oh, poor old Wendy. She's got a um, uh, she's got a cold this morning. Poor old Wendy. Not old Wendy. Poor Wendy, who will be coming to uh, the Barry Manilow concert, I believe, on the same night as me. I shall be meeting Wendy. That's very exciting. Marginally not as exciting as seeing the man himself, Barry Manilow, but I'm sure Wendy was understand that. She would probably say the same, you know, she, she's meeting Chris Reardon at the Barry Manilow concert, although it's not as exciting as meeting Barry Manilow. And I, I will accept that. You know, very, very few people I would say that about, but definitely it, to see Barry Manilow, I understand, would be more exciting than meeting me. Absolutely. Because it's the same for me as well. Good morning to Matt. Good morning, Matt, who says, uh, leave Croydon alone. I live in the posh bit, as you know, dear. Oh, do me a favour, Matt. I've heard about your place. I've heard, I've heard it's a right dump. Is that right inside your flat, Matt? You don't wash up. You go in the kitchen. It's one of those, like, kitchen bowls full up to the brim with all these plates and things like that because you, ca you can't be bothered to wash up. It is, isn't it? I know what your place is like. Have you ever dusted? I've heard that you've never dusted in your house, Matt. I mean, I don't know what you're living down here doing in the south, really. You want to move in with Terry in Leeds. I think you do. Yeah, that, that's what it is, Matt. You know, don't, don't come telling me, you know, I live in the posh part of Croydon. Do me a favour. There are no posh parts of Croydon. You want to live somewhere posh? Mark, look, Chertsey. Chertsey. Did you know, Mark, my, um, my auntie lives in Churchley. Now, what's the name of the road? Schools Avenue, Schools Hill Lane, Schools Road, something like that. Uh, her, her house backs onto the canal. Are you near there? Now, what's the name of the place? Oh, gosh. You go over a little bridge, I think, and then you, 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 you do first left... Yeah, the bridge, of course, goes over the canal, doesn't it? Then you do a first left, and her house backs onto the canal. Yeah. So, uh, Mark used to work in Lyme. Oh, I think I've been there, Mark. That's where I know you from. We haven't... I might pop down as you... Yes. <laughs> uh, you could come with me. No, you couldn't, because I don't come that way, do I? Well, to leave, to be there at six o'clock, I go... I go... Um, well, it depends which way the sat-nav takes me. I always put sat-nav on for all my London jobs now, whatever day it is. Although I know the route, I always use Schools Lane. That's it. That's where my aunt lives. She lives down there. 
She lives on the... There's like two sides of the road. There's a nice side. And there's a, you know, a, like a, a Croydon side. Do you know what I mean? And she lives on the nice side. And her house backs... <coughs> her house actually backs onto this canal. It's a beautiful little place. Really nice. I think it is Schools Lane. I'm sure it is. Schools Lane. Good God. And you... Did you get flooded? Oh, how awful. Did, did your house... What, in the living room and all that? Water. Oh, please tell me it wasn't sewage. Oh, bleh. I can't think... Oh, that must be the worst thing ever. Eh? Being flooded by sewage. Just awful. Let's see. Yes, so that's... The route I take would be either M3 or M4. Now, M3, I would go M3, OK? Uh... Richmond, Mortlake, Barnes, Putney, uh, Wandsworth, Clapham, and then round that, uh, is it South Circular? I think it's South Circular. Or M4, okay, Hammersmith, Flyover, Earl's Court, Chelsea, a long embankment, and cross one of the bridges and up that way. So it's either that way, one way or the other. And I never know which way it's going to take me, depending on the traffic, because it's got those... Uh, fantastic, that is, that Tom Tom with the live traffic updates. And it's on, my, it's on my mobile phone. It's on my mobile phone app. I've got app. You know, very, very good. Very good indeed. Uh, Mark says, it wasn't the sewage, it was the sandbag stopped it. However, we were the only house that didn't get flooded. You were lucky. You were very, very lucky, my friend. OK, we'll have to sort that out then, Mark. All right, Richmond, yeah, that's fine. Richmond would be fine. Okie doke. Any more messages before I tell you what, what terrible things are? Oh, my nephew is with us as well this morning. Good morning, Jimmy Butler. If you're wondering what that noise is about, it's just something that we all do, you know. You can make stupid noises as well if you want while we're doing our show. My sister said the men in white coats would take me away. Because you do know, I do realise that that won't actually happen, sis. You can tell your mother this, Jimmy. It won't actually happen because I know I'm mad. That the problem occurs when people are mad but don't know it. And we all know those, don't we? Let's be honest. I mean, look at the politicians, for example. Mad as atters, David Cameron. Off his head. Off his head. Nick Clegg, well, I don't, <laughs> poor Nick, poor Nick, why, I mean, why does he bother? Do you ever wonder that? The Lib Dems, why do they bother? <laughs> Nick Clegg, poor Nick, he tries so hard, so hard, and he comes out with so much crap, it's unbelievable. Nigel Farage, <laughs> I like him. He's like, I don't know, he's, he's like, I don't know, I just... He's, he's just got a personality. Forget the politics for a minute. OK, OK. Put all the... Po OK, forget all the politics, right? Forget the politics. Who would you prefer to have a chat to? Nick Clegg. All right? David Cameron. Oh, I forgot the Labour one. What's his name? What's his name? Um... <laughs> Miliband Mr Miliband what's his first name it's not David that's the other one isn't it that's the, that's the good looking one what's the ugly one what's his name the labour bloke he is ugly isn't he I mean how can, <laughs> how can you have someone like that running a bloody country David David Miliband is it David oh someone tell me I can't remember now David David Miliband whatever his name is, the Labour bloke, OK? Or Nigel Farage. Who would you rather have a chat with? Nigel Farage. Forget the politics. Who's just got a personality? See, the thing is, most of these politicians, they've got these... Ed, that's it, Ed Miliband. Thank you, Jimmy Butler. Nephew, Jimmy Butler knows everything. Ed Miliband. By the way... Can I just let let people into a little secret, Jimmy? Do you mind me telling them about the theory test? Can I tell them about the theory test? Okay, 
can I, I'll wait for your permission before I tell him that. Yeah, Nigel Farage, you'd like to have a conversation with him. The other three, the PR people have got to them, haven't they? Now, all these politicians now generally have PR people, and they kind of... How would you say it? Um, OK, compare the show I'm doing to someone on the BBC. OK, I am rough-edged. OK, no one's told me to, oh, no, you, you might upset someone, do it a bit like this, or, oh, no, no, do it like that. Okay? No one's telling me to do that. I do it. This is me. There's nothing that's been rounded off. I haven't had the corners rounded off me and two inches of makeup and all this old business and people tell me what to say, not to say, and all that old stuff, right? On the BBC, you would have a team of people, you know, every now and again, I might have to disappear off camera and they do a little bit more to my face and then they come back again and they would be telling you what, roughly what to say. Are you with me? Or at least you would you, you would go to some sort of school or something and, and, and tell them and they would tell you what to say. Now, now look at the politicians. That is that is what I mean by uh, Miliband, Cameron and um, who's the other one? Uh, Clegg. Clegg, is, Clegg, is the, Clegg, I think, is the one that's had the corners rubbed off so much. Well, all three of them have had the corners rubbed off so much. They all look the same. It's a little bit like going into McDonald's. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, those burgers and chips will look and taste exactly the same. Well, it's like those three politicians. And that's why I like Nigel Farage. No, I don't agree with all his policies. A good lot of them I do. But we're not talking politics. We're just talking of the personalities here. He has a personality. In years gone by, before you were alive, Terry, and certainly before you were alive, Mark, OK, people on the television and in radio all had their own personalities. You would watch... OK, you would listen to the radio for Tony Blackburn. You would listen to the radio for uh, Dave Lee Char Travis. You would listen to the radio for Bruno Brooks, OK? All these people had their own personality. And it was Tony Blackburn, and he's going to play this music, right? Now, radio stations, wherever you are in the country, basically sound the same. They are all clones. They've all gone to this bloody radio school and been told roughly what to say in between the records and how to say it. God, it's so boring. And it's a bit like that with these three politicians. They're all the same. Policies are slightly different, but they all look and sound the same. It's boring. Nigel Farage is not boring. My favourite speech of his, and you can find it on YouTube, is when he stands up in this European court and screaming at this... I don't even know his name. That's how important these European MPs are. We don't even know their names. The only European MP's name I know is Nigel Farage. And I bet the same could be said for most people in this country. The only European MP they know, MEP they know, is Nigel Farage. Right? He's fantastic. My favourite speech is when he stood there and he's, he's talking to this bloke who's in charge. He's like, who the hell do you think you are? You're standing up there, unelected, nobody likes you. <laughs> it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. So there we are, a little bit. God knows how we got onto that. I really didn't know that. Mark says you're rough-edged, but thoroughly more interesting and educated. Rough? I'm a bit rough, aren't I? I, sometimes I don't even bother having a shave before I come and do the show. Well, I haven't today. Yeah, look, you, you can't quite see it. Uh, for those of you listening, here's the proof that I haven't had a shave. I'm now going to rub my chin on the microphone. Listen. Right? <laughs> They're the little hairs that are protruding. Because I have to shave ten times a day now, Mark. Because I'm so manly. 
right? I have to shave 10 times a day. Uh, Bruce Forsyth used to have a personality, and wow. No, Bruce still has a personality, doesn't he? I, do you know, I'd like to see Bruce Forsyth have one more go at the generation game. I think he's done it... Has he done it three times, I think? I'd like to see him have one more shot at the generation game, just one more series. I think he's got it in him. But they mustn't push him around too much because he's elderly now, you know. Uh, I think elderly people... You go past 60, 65, elderly people deserve respect. Absolutely, they do. Um, Okay, Jimmy. Jimmy Butler, my nephew had his theory test this week for car driving. Oh, boys and girls. He didn't pass. Doesn't matter, does it? You know, you can try again and again and again. Tell you what, Jim, I'll be... I'm going to... I'm going to predict that you will pass the third time. Prove me wrong and pass the second time and there will be a prize. Now, what can I give you? Let me see. Oh, I know. This wonderful DVD, The Best of the Human League. Dun, 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 dun. Don't you want me, baby? Oh, don't you want me? No. I will give you this Human League, The Best of CD, if you pass second time. I predict you will pass third time. Theory test. Don't worry about it. That's how it is. So my poor nephew hasn't passed his um, uh, theory test yet, unfortunately. All right. Now, good morning, Wendy. Ed Miliband. Yes, that was the name I was trying to find there. Ed Miliband. It it was not appearing. Uh, Matt says, you mentioned the royal family earlier. I forgot to tell you that I will be meeting Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall on May the 20th at an event here in Winnipeg. Looking forward to meeting them both. What, really? Actually touching them? Not like that, you know. Touching them? Are you going to touch them? Shake hands? How fantastic is that? Oh, you've got to get a photo. Can you get a photo of you and them, please? Shaking hands or something like that. I'm impressed. I'm very, very impressed. Although I must say, I think I'd rather meet Shirley Bassey than one of those two. I, I, I don't get me wrong. Love the Royals. I think they're fantastic. I love everything they do. But I think Shirley Bassey or Barry Manilow I'd like to meet more. Yes, I would. Um, they're coming to Winnipeg. Yes, they're doing a bit of a tour. Are they bringing baby George there? And that... The story I was going to tell you... And then I will tell you about my hospital visit yesterday. I had to go to hospital yesterday. <laughs> oh, not a very pleasant experience. Now, where's this story? OK, so in the Daily Express this morning, don't buy the Daily Express. What a load of old crap that is. And never, ever, ever take any notice of the weather in the Daily Express when they tell you what the weather's going to be like, okay? They always get it really, I mean, not just a bit wrong, hopelessly wrong. Completely and totally hopelessly wrong. Oh, by the way, there's an email if you want to join it at any point. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And just quickly checking my email, Mark also sent an email in and says that the normal way of as soon as the sun peeps out when everyone becomes topless... <laughs> I can be topless now, Mark, because I have lost a stone in weight. Thank you very much. Yes, I've lost a stone in weight. I've even used a topless photograph of my of, of my own on a certain dating website now. I put it up about three weeks ago. I'm still waiting to receive a message, but I'm sure people like it. <laughs> uh, in the Daily Express this morning... Uh, Duchess Kate dazzles in green, but a bit too brightly for William. And it says, um, uh, it's a brave husband who criticises his wife's outfit at any time. But when your wife is a world fashion icon, it's doubly dangerous. The Duchess of Cambridge revealed today that Prince William went where few have dared to tread. 
after questioning the colour of the coat she wore during a day of official engagements in the Wakato region of New Zealand. Kate dazzled in a 2000 emerald green Erdem coat. £2,000 for a coat? Kate, dear, where on earth are you going for your clothes? £2,000 for a coat? Christ almighty, they weren't that when it... You want to go to Florida, go to the designer outlets when you take uh, baby... Oh, not Harry. George. When you take baby Harry to, to um, Disney in Florida, OK? You know, when you're pushing that pram along, Kate, and uh, probably William, you know, he's stuck at the, uh, uh, at the place buying another cinnamon stick for himself. You, when you go there, right, on one of your other days, non-Disney days... OK, go to the designer outlets. You won't be spelling 2000 on a coat. That's ridiculous. I'm going to sneeze. One minute. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <coughs> anyway, so. <coughs> so this is in the. Um, oh, God. What's that in there? Uh, there's, a, there's probably a reason I'm sneezing. I'm going to tell you a minute. <coughs> Um, so she's got this green coat on. Now, I can see a picture of the coat. It looks lovely. There's nothing wrong with that coat. It's better than your boring old blue suit, my young man. How dare you criticise your wife like that? That's shocking. Lovely. It is a bright green coat. I love bright colours. I love big, bold, bright colours. None of this magnolia paint in the house, you know, or painting it all beige so that it's neutral. No, thank you. Big, Bright, bold colours, that's what we want. And Kate Middleton has a lovely, beautiful green dress on. And maybe, you know, maybe um, uh, Mr William, Mr Prince William, you know, maybe you should uh, set the pace yourself and start buying some brightly coloured suits. You know, a nice yellow. Uh, Elton John could help you out. Why don't you have a word with Elton John? He'll help you out with a nice couple of colourful suits. What a bloody cheek. Shut your mouth. There's nothing wrong with that green suit she's got on. <laughs> Daniel says you sneeze on every show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Wendy says congratulations. What on? What have I done now? What, have I, what am I to be congratulated on? What's happened? What's happened that I should be congratulated on? Is there more than five people watching now or something? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can get round to that story, Mark. Meanwhile, I've got to tell you, I, I've got to tell you what happened yesterday. OK, so back in January, uh, a gland has come up on my neck. OK, on the if you're looking at me, it would be on on. What, what, hang on a minute. Look, right, left, le right. Right. If you were looking at me, it would be on my right hand side. That gland has come up on my neck in January. And sometimes it's worse than at other times. Today, not too bad at all. It's not affecting my voice or anything like that. Sometimes, as regular listeners to the show will know, it does actually affect my voice. Is that wheel turning around? Yes, it is. It does actually affect my voice, but not today. OK. Um, and I've been to the doctor and so far uh, we've had a course of antibiotics and I've had a, 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 like a scan because they were looking for uh, nodules on the thyroid gland this is to do they say this is to, something to do with the thyroid gland so that's it so they didn't find anything but then he made an appointment for me to go to the Ear, Nose and Throat Hospital at Frimley Park, which is uh, no more than 15 minutes away from here. Um, Wendy says, congratulations. Oh, for the weight loss. Yes, the weight loss. I'll, t I'll go on to that bit. Uh, um, so that was that. Now, Monday this week, it came up quite large. Um, it doesn't affect my breathing. It doesn't affect me eating or uh, when I swallow like this. When I swallow, it feels not painful. It's never, ever painful. OK, never painful. I would never say it hurts. 
I wouldn't even go as far as saying it's uncomfortable. It just feels not right, you know. So when I swallow, I can feel it more that side than that side. Now, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday this week, it came right up. But also inwards as well. So it doesn't just show coming out. I could feel it on the inside as well. In fact, when I went to sleep at night, if I put my head down that way, I could almost feel something hanging. Right? Put the head the other way, it was okay. Put my head back, I could feel it hanging again. So I thought, well, Wednesday, I thought I'd better ring the doctor and tell him about this. So I rung him up. And I says, hello, doc, you know, I've got this, uh, got a very good doctor here. You never really wait for an appointment. But I didn't feel that I needed to go and see someone. I didn't feel it was an urgent thing, like, you know, like, but I thought you better know what's going on. So I said to him, um, I've got this, it seems to have come up worse. OK, he said, well, he said, you've got an appointment Friday. He said, if there is anything growing there, it's growing very, very slowly. So... Um, as long as it's not painful. Have you got a fever? I said, no, nothing like that at all. Um, oh, someone's just mentioned... Just a minute. The pendulum in my clock had stopped working. You do notice everything, don't you, eh? Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Matt just sent in a message. Has the pendulum on your clock stopped? Maybe it's just the live video not picking up. No, it's moving again now. Sorry about that. Isn't it funny how people notice things? I'm surprised Daniel... And so the clock is not wonky, is it? Is the clock wonky? Hang on a minute. Let me have a look. Because it looks different to you than it does to me. Oh, it is a bit, isn't it? One minute. Right, is that better? <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't asked where the flowers are, Daniel. Because I did promise you some flowers this week up behind me here, didn't I? I forgot to do it. That's, that's all it is. Anyway, uh, so back to the story. So he said to me, if there is anything growing, it's growing very slowly. All right, so I kind of thought, okay, he said, have you got any fever or anything like that? And I said, no. He said, right, well, if you get one, call straight away and then we'll do something. But other than that, wait till Friday. So that, that was Wednesday. Thursday, it went down, okay? So it wasn't as bad. Got to Friday, it's gone back down to what it has been most of the time. So minor, very minor. Minorly bigger than what then the there's nothing on at all on the other there's nothing at, at all on the other side it's only one side this is coming up the other side is completely flat so uh yesterday came and i went down to the uh frimley park hospital found somewhere to park went in sat down got myself a cup of tea sat down and then i got called in uh, actually before my appointment i tend i get to appointments very early now, my best friend, Ron, he rushes to play. Oh, the appointment's at three o'clock. It takes 15 minutes to get here. We'll leave at a quarter to. No, we won't leave at a quarter to. We'll leave an hour before the appointment. This is when, whenever I've got appointments for, to do things, right, I will turn up very early, especially if it's a medical thing, like a hospital or a doctor. I get there very early. Always have done, you know. You know, the NHS, their time is precious, and I think it's so rude and inconsiderate to turn up to hospitals and doctors late. Now, if you're doing a journey, doing the daytime, there's a fair chance you're going to get caught in traffic. And that's why I get to places early. So I had a three o'clock appointment. I got there at five past two. No problem at all. There's a place to have a cup of tea. You can go and sit down, have a walk around or whatever. I will not rush and be late. I, I, I would die if I was late for a doctor or a hospital appointment. I would be so embarrassed. My best mate Ron says, just ring them. They understand. Just tell them you're going to be 10 minutes late. No, no. The appointment was for three o'clock, not 10 past three. So the next person's going to be 10 minutes later because of you. No. I won't do it. So that's why. So I got there about five past two, checked in, went and had a cup of tea from a very nice hospital, actually, Frimley Park Hospital. It's in Frimley, uh, which is, uh, I think it's Surrey. I'm not quite sure. And went in and sat in. It was, it was a bit like a dentist's chair. You know those dentist's chairs? 
Those of you listening on UK Health Radio will be very interested in this part of the show today. So she said, what's wrong? So I told her, da, 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 da. right, have you got, uh, do you take any any um, uh, medication for anything? So I said, yes, and I got out these bottles because I do have something long-term, okay? I don't talk about it on this show, uh, but I do have a bit of a long-term thing, okay? She said, uh, okay, um, so you got asthma? I said, yes, I've got asthma. Is there anything else? I said, yes, so I told her, oh, right, okay then. So she starts asking these questions, so she writes all that down, right? So then, right, she says, okay, so what I'm going to do today, she says, I'm going to have an external feel of of your um, uh, uh, gland. And then she says, I'm going to have a look down your throat um, with a very small camera. OK, you know, and I'm, I've kind of already switched myself off here because don't really want to know. Just do it. So she's she's prodded around on here. She says, OK, I said, can you feel it? She said, yeah, it moves around. It's It's difficult to find. She said, it's moving around a lot. Um, OK, fair enough. And then she says, right, I'm going to have to put this camera up your nose now. Uh, I said, oh, up my nose. She said, yep. She said, I'll spray some, not disinfectant. Oh, what's it called now? Anesthetic. I'm going to spray some anesthetic up your nose. What you've got to do is sniff it down to the back of your throat. OK, that's what you've got to do. So she's got this stuff. Just like, just a bit like that, you know, sinutex, a sinus spray that you put up. Just shove something up there. And I said, <laughs> sniffed it down like that, and, and that was all well and good. Didn't think anything more of it. She said, you will feel it start to go numb. Okay, fair enough. So she did the examination here. And then she said, right, I'm going to do the camera now. I said, well, okay, I won't be watching. So she explained what it was. It would go up your nose and back down your throat. Oh, my God. It is the worst thing ever. It really is. I hope, boys and girls, that you never have to have this thing done. It's just awful. Now, because of the anaesthetic, you cannot feel anything. You don't feel anything scraping up into your nose and like that. But you know there's something there. You, you, you can feel something there. And I'm like... <coughs> Oh, I'm like that. Uh, so uh, uh, it was just awful. My eyes are watering. Uh, you know, my nose and mouth are leaking now. And they give us these two tiny little bits of tissue paper. I mean, they were gone after the first dab. <laughs> and she had a look around and she had to take it out twice because I just wasn't tolerating it. Um, but on the third time, she finished off, and I've got my hand like, mm, mm, mm. are you okay? Are you okay? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, uh, uh. She goes, say E, E, say R, R. She said, okay, take a deep breath in. Because <gasps> she's looking at all the bits down here, see? Isn't it clever, really? A very thin cat. It's not like a great big tube. I suppose, what have I got in here? You know, it's like a piece of thick wire. Maybe a, like this headphone cable. I've got this headphone cable here. What is it, like about a quarter of a centimetre wide? And that goes up your nose. And that's it, and down into your throat. So she finished that. The whole procedure took about three minutes, if that. Only about three minutes while she was doing all this. And it was just awful. But it, it didn't stop there, because after that, um, the anaesthetic is still working you see, and you can't feel yourself swallow. And your voice goes <laughs> You won't go like that for about 15 minutes. It's, it's so you sound like a Dalek. Seriously? And it goes like that. And I was talking like that. How long is this going to last for? And she said it, it'll last for no more than an hour. Probably a lot less. But the worst thing was, I felt I couldn't swallow. And I felt like, you know when that gunk comes up and you either blow your nose or something like that? I felt that that was going down my windpipe. And I said, I, I said is, is there gunk going down my, my throat? She said, no, because you're coughing. And when you cough, you clear your lungs out. If you're coughing, then it's coming up and going back down the other way. She says, I know it feels awful now it's the same for everyone it will last no longer than an hour she said if you want to go and sit outside don't drink anything hot because you won't be able to feel it 
don't drink anything and it might go down the wrong way and you won't know about it so okay fair enough and and that was it really and for and then i had to she she couldn't see anything down there she couldn't find anything down there um that looked wrong so now uh, i've got to have blood tests so I then went down to the blood test section. Is that philopathy or something? Like philopathy. Um, went down for the blood test and uh, they'd done that. And um, then I had to hand in this thing to the x-ray scanning. What's the scanner thing? Ultrasound. Because they want to do another ultrasound. Um, I said, well, they've already done that. She said, yeah, but that wasn't here. And we like to do our own. Fair enough. So you're going to do it. And for that, I have to have another appointment. So I get a letter in the post saying, please turn up there for this thing. But so far, they found nothing. So now they're doing these blood tests and that's it. And that's where I am so far. And actually, um, I was able to swallow after about 25 minutes. So I was a lot happier after that. It was, it's awful not being, a, not being able to swallow. Oh, that is just the worst thing ever. So that was my trip yesterday to the hospital. And God, I, I just hope that you don't have to do any of that. It's just an awful, awful thing. It really is. Um, Daniel says they didn't spray anything in my nose. I was in Frimley Hospital last week having a camera up, up the other... Oh, were you really? Oh, how awful. <laughs> I don't think I'd have a problem with that one, Daniel. <laughs> Wendy says you sound like Tommy Cooper, do I? Oh, please, Tommy Cooper. So that's my hospital appointment, Terry H. All right? Um, and I think that's about it for today, boys and girls. Let me just have a quick look, see if I've uh, missed anything out here. I think we're done today. At a lovely time on Monday, actually. Monday I went to visit uh, one of our regular listeners and uh, correspondents. She's not with us today. Millie, motorised Millie. Um, who's over here in the UK from Minnesota, USA. And she's staying at a wonderful, wonderful hotel, the Waldorf, uh, which is just, just a stunning, stunning hotel. It really is. That's it for me today. Thank you very much for uh, joining me. I'm going to ring my cousin now, um, Simon, in Abu Dhabi, where he works. He's a big, big man in a bank over there, my cousin. OK, thanks so much for joining and uh, watching today. Uh, we're still doing our short videos. We do a daily little video. You can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. If you want to send in an email during the week, please feel free to do so. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye bye now.